Benton Harbor is 70% unemployed. And Benton Harbor has within its presence the Black Autonomy Network community organization known as Banco. <laughs> Fighting back! The founder of Banco is Reverend Pinckney. I want to say I had the pleasure of meeting Reverend Pinckney in person, marched with the brother at Benton Harbor, Michigan, many years ago, have been following his work, have been with him in solidarity. He has been with me and with us in solidarity. I can't count the number of times we've shared a stage, Reverend Pinckney. The number of times, another one of those great long distance runners. I do want to just cut it into some context for you. Because as the leader of the Black Autonomy Network, Reverend Pinckney was convicted by an all-white jury that found him guilty of basically registering voters. <laughs> Got that right, more or less? So, Reverend Pinckney has become well-known because he not only picketed the Berrien County Courthouse daily to protest the racism of a criminal justice system that did not provide defense for the poor, mostly African-American defendants. Reverend Pinckney is not afraid to name names. Reverend Pinckney is not afraid to put his body on the line. Reverend Pinckney is proud to be a member of the Green Party of the United States. I consider it my privilege to introduce my friend, Reverend Pinckney. Thank you. Thank you, David, my friend. Love you. Love you. We've been together a long time. Yes, sir. 2004. He actually came and marched with him. He was running for president of the United States. And also, I want to acknowledge Michigan Green. Senator yeah. Michigan Green. They have supported me from day one. And I love them all. We've been working extremely hard to get things done. We love you too. Hey, and I just want to ask you just a few questions. Green Party. Do you believe in democracy? Yes. yes! Are you sure? Yes! Are you willing to fight for democracy? Yes! See, that's what Greens stand for, democracy. Yes. Well, I live in Benton Harbor, Michigan, and we are under a dictator. That is correct. We have our very own dictator. <laughs> and I want to thank Governor Snyder for him, because what he has done, he has almost not only destroyed the city of Benton Harbor, but it's coming to your town next. But we fight back. Yeah. Let me give you a little history, because we don't have a whole lot of time. Do anybody know who is House Representative Fred Upton? All right. He's the heir to Whirlpool. <laughs> and here's what makes it so important. Albert Choka, they put a bill on the floor. House Bill 42, 14, 15, 16, 17, and 18. And 42, 86. Then John Pro, also from Berrien County. It was sent to the Senate. It became House Bill 153, 154, 155, 156, and 158. Then it was sent to Governor Snyder. When he signed, it became public at four. That gives a non-elected official absolute power. The first thing he did was to put the mayor, death, down in the basement. <laughs> Took his desk and put it in the basement and told him, he was no longer the mayor of the city of Benton Harbor. Mm. Then he took the elected officials, the commissioners, he took their cell phones. Then he took their key to City Hall. He told them that they can come into City Hall and visit only when he's around. Then it gets even better. He told them that they can have a meeting, but you can only take minutes. 
take minutes, uh, uh, and, and then you have to end the minute. You can't vote on anything. He said if everybody in the city of Benton Harbor voted for something, and he voted against it, he wins. <laughs> this is the only place that actually have a dictator. But we fight back. We fight back. We fight back. We do not allow them to come in and do things. Right now, Detroit, which the city they was gunning for, is now about to get a EM. They call them the emergency manager under Trump Act 4. We went out and got 226,000 signatures. But they said the phone was the wrong size. They said it wasn't 14. And they refused to put it on the ballot. It went to the appeal court. They approved it. But they still refused to put it on the November ballot. Now it's in the Supreme Court. They're going to hear, I believe it's July the 24th or 25th or 26th. What makes this so important to each and every one of you is coming to your city next. Ben, little bitty Ben Harbor was the testing ground. It was the testing ground to see what they can get away with and how they was going to do this. We should be ashamed of ourselves to we'll call ourselves a, a person who, who will believe in democracy and the city of Benton Harbor has a dictator. A man with absolute power. He controls everything in the city. But we fight back. Yeah. We fight back. We fight back. This man, see, what they're doing now, they're training these EMs to come in. They trained over 174 EMs just in the, in the state of Michigan. They're trained right now to come in and take over your government. And people around the country is not listening. That's what I do. I go around the country and I usually talk about it. And normally, I have 45 minutes to speak about it, but today I only got eight. <laughs> but remember this, this is so, so important. We have to stand up for democracy because that's what Greens stand for. We stand for democracy. We stand for democracy. They have made this EM a Trojan horse. Do you know the story of the Trojan horse? How they pushed it inside these, uh, these cities and locked the gates, and they're full of these EMs. And what they're going to do, they're going to jump out while you're sleeping and take over your city, take over your country. So we have to say, enough is enough. Let's stand together. Enough. It's enough. Yes. Enough. It's yes. enough. Yes. Enough. It's yes. enough. Yes. We got to fight back. We got to show you what's going on. You have to go to the internet and read about the city of Benton Harbor. Because it's coming to your city next, whether you like it or not. They're in total control. This is why the Green Party is so important today. I mean, if you weren't here, if you weren't green, what would you be? <laughs> That's my question to you. So we have to say, I'm going to leave on this note. So get ready. The first thing we're going to do is say, enough is enough. 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 Let's fight back. Can we fight back today? Reverend Edward Pinckney from Benton Harbor, Michigan. And the reason I'm here, I'm here to tell people about the city of Benton Harbor and what's happening in Benton Harbor is coming to your city next. 
like, for example, for people that don't know about The people that don't know. There's a lot of people around the country do not know about Benton Harbor. Benton Harbor is a city that is 92% African American. 70% of the people are unemployed. Over 90% of the people live below the poverty level. And right now, we have a dictator. And what kind of um, dictator esque things is he doing? Well, first of all, he has absolute power. The first thing he did, he gave away um, our beach. He allowed them to put three golf holes, the six, seven, and eight holes in our beach, a Jack Nicholas signature golf course. Then what he did, he gave away land around the beach for this $500 million project by uh, Harbor Shores and, and Whirlpool. What Whirlpool have done, they have came in and have received a $50 million tax break from a city that's $5 million in the red and have refused to pay taxes for the last 10 years. They also, they refuse to pay their water bill. For the golf course itself, they're pumping water out of the Paw Paw River free rather than pay the city of Benton Harbor for water. So what we're doing, we're fighting back. We're letting them know that we're not taking this mess anymore. And we're standing up to them, letting them know that we're here and we're here to stay. Great. And um, tell me about your personal experiences in your fight for getting voters registered and all that. Well, actually, what we did, we went out and recalled one of the Whirlpool honchos. Matter of fact, uh, anytime you get land from the city of Benton Harbor, you have to have six votes. And this guy was the man who received the money underneath the table. And he spread the wealth around to his constituents. And uh, we decided to recall him. If we would have recalled him, there would be no Jack Nicholas signature golf course. There would be no condominiums around this golf course. So what we did, we recalled him. We were successful at it. So what they did, they had him to go out and find somebody who would say that I paid them to vote. He found a young man that he knew. He paid him $10 to say that I paid him $5. And that started the reverse of the election. Matter of fact, Paul Maloney threw the election out and said the reason he threw throwing it out, they didn't have enough votes to actually say that the majority became the minority. But instead, they threw it out because said, because Reverend Pinckney was involved with it. And then that brought him back into his seat where the sixth vote that they had, and they was able to get the land. That's why today we have this Jets. Nicholas Signature Golf Course, and we are surrounded, we're, they're building the condominiums now around the golf course. So that's what it later, but it even gets better than that. They could only give me probation for that. But what I did, I wrote an article in, in one of my newspapers telling the judge that he knew, because he was planning, he, he, he was going to make millions and millions of dollars on this project, you see. And what we did, we exposed him also. So what he said during the thing, I called him corrupt. When I called him corrupt and I quoted the scripture, Deuteronomy 28, starting with the 15th verse, and he said that that was a threat on his life, his family life, and everybody else's life, and he sent me to prison for three to 10 years just for that quote. But it didn't stop the move. That's what they was trying to do. Because all while I was in there, I became nationally known. And during that process, while I was inside the prison system, I ran for U.S. representative against the heir to Whirlpool, Fred Upton, and got more than 5,000 votes, which was so incredible that even people today are still talking about that. That's one of the reasons why I'm here today. Other than that, I probably would not be here. But I know how to fight back. I know how to stand up for what's right. I know what we're doing is the right thing to do. I believe in democracy, and we don't have democracy, not, not just in the city of Benjamin, but around the country. So we have to show them and tell them enough is enough. That's great. So now, you're a registered Green, right? Yes. How long have you been a uh, registered Green for? Uh, since 2004. All right, great. And do you get a lot of flack from people like saying, well, what are you registering green? They're not a real party. you got to support the Democrats. They're for us. Well, you know what? <laughs> they would never tell me that because they would, they would probably get a lecture for about, about 30 to 40 minutes on, on, on this Republican Party and Democrat Party. And they, would, they do not want to hear me talk. They do whatever they can to, to keep me quiet because they know once they open up any kind of debate, most likely I'm going to win. But what makes everything so amazing when you think about it, 
And, and and the Green Party, they they uh, the Michigan Green, mm -hmm. they have stood with me, shoulder to shoulder. Yeah. You know, they have came down. Now we're 170 miles from where most of them are located. You see, but they travel down to see me. I travel up to see them too. Mm -hmm. You see, so we make sure that we all connected. Uh, just recently, we had occupied the PGA. This is where the shirt comes in. So get this, get yeah. That shirt. Nice. All yeah. Right. And everybody was in uniform. I'll get you one of my newspapers. Uh, we was in uniform. We had hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people to come and show up in Benton Harbor. Occupied to be Jill Stein came. Mm -hmm. She was there and she was one of my speakers. And what we did, we was expressing to them and telling them that, you know, normally by us being a black city, they didn't want to give us a dime for them coming, for coming to Benton Harbor. They wanted to take all the profits and split it, split it among themselves. So the first thing we asked for 10% of the profits. We said, you get zero. Then we said, well, we're going to ask for 25%. Because they figured, remember this, they always think that black people can't do anything. But they, they met their match. They knew I was able to do something. Okay. So what I did, we started occupying the PGA. I had people come from all over the country. They came from Mexico, Finland, Norway. Uh, I can't think of one other, one other place they came, but they came to be part of this. And what happened was, we had a no, we, we, uh, we had a, our, our line was over a mile long of people marching to Gene Clark Park. And what they saw was that, hmm, now Pinckney can do something. I didn't think people would come. And when they came, it was a total flop. The PGA, they called the senior PGA, was a total flop. They was angry, they was mad, and they tried to blame me. Even Golf Digest wrote an article in reference to me saying that they were shocked that so many people would come out for something like this. And, but they showed up and they showed out. And we flew over 500 kites over the golf course. It was it was it was just tremendous, and and they was more than excited for the simple reason, because they were thinking that nobody would show up and even contest something like a goal, but we was ready for it. Yeah, but it's it, it's so good, but it gets better than that. I, I you know I got so many stories to tell you. But let's let's do this. Okay. You're gonna be here all day, right? Yeah, I'll be here all day. So I'll let let me come back. Yeah, because you got to eat. Yeah, and, yeah. and give you some more stuff because I'm gonna talk about Rick Snyder, the governor, next, oh. <laughs> and what and what we did to him. Nice. Now, what, when I when I see this was such a a, a, a major. We didn't have so many victories, even right. with Whirlpool. Right now we we're boycotting uh, all Whirlpool products. And they own over seventy percent of all washer, dryer, soap, and refrigerators. And right now, their stock is at a, uh, they got a minus B rating, credit rating. The city of Benton Harbor, which is five million dollars in the red, have a better credit rating than than uh, Whirlpool themselves. So they're angry, and they think that I am responsible for that. That's what, everything that goes on. They blame me. It's all your yeah, fault. Yeah, everything. You know, <laughs> if they don't sell another soap and refrigerator, they say it's Pinkney's fault. So that's how they do it. But I'm willing, I can handle it. Yeah. You know, I'd rather you to attack me than attack somebody else who can't fight back. That's right. Yeah. Look, I'll talk to you. It's great, man. Hey, yeah, yeah. I, 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 believe me, it's, I can talk for hours. Oh.